some breaking news that's just come into us as well. The talk show legend Jerry Springer has died aged 79, according to a family statement. They said Jerry's ability to connect with people was at the very heart of his success in everything he tried, whether that was politics, broadcasting, or just joking with people on the street who wanted a photo or a word. That's according to a family spokesman. Uh, he's irreplaceable and his loss hurts immensely, but memories of his intellect, heart and humour will live on. Uh, some years ago, we had Jerry Springer on the show, on TalkSport. He came in and it was... There's some celebrities, you might have had this, uh, if, if you, you know, met, met, you meet the odd famous person from time to time and obviously doing this for a living, you bump into them disproportionately. Around here, sometimes in the lift, sometimes past another studio, walk past TalkSport a few months ago, Rod Stewart was sitting in there, just sort of goes with the job. So um, it was uh, extraordinary that I... We invited him in. I can't remember what it was for, but he was hosting of I Got News For You the next night. Um, and he was so recognisable, and this might sound a little strange, he was so recognisable that it was, it was kind of like somebody was wearing a Jerry Springer mask. It was, it was just like, wow, it's him. He's been on the telly all my life. This guy's been there forever. Um, and he was the most delightful, erudite, funny, intelligent guy. He was just great. He sat with us for about an hour. We didn't plan any big questions for him. We just, because I kind of, you know, I thought this guy chews the fat, right? This is a bloke that you could throw anything at Springer and he won't let you down. He knows the game. He's got opinions on everything. Former, I think he was a mayor as well at some point in his career. So he's got a, a political leaning too. And he was just a fabulous bloke. Um, very, very funny. And he had stories and anecdotes, as you can imagine. Um, but I can remember, I think like most of you, when you first saw the Jerry Springer show, which was the run-up to lots that followed. I know that those who like those American talk shows will remember the likes of Phil Donahue and Geraldo and people like that for the sort of talk show, Yankee talk show anoraks. But Springer was the one that went international. Springer was the one that took it to a whole new level. And the first time we all saw one of those shows, we were, that was disbelief territory, wasn't it? Really? There was a, I just saw a man on TV who's married his horse. There was a bit of that. There were, the, there were all manner of rows. And as it went on and kind of became more dramatic, there were even more rows. The security fella used to run on and stop them. And it was a forerunner to a lot of formats. That Some of it we had over here. And much of it, of course, we just admired when it was over there. But Springer as a person, whatever you think of the kind of TV that he became most famous for presenting, uh, was just a just a wonderfully delightful man, just a really decent bloke who was funny and humorous, bright, and his anecdotes just went on forever. He is the bloke you want to go to the pub with. And I've always thought that's the, a, a measure, really, of people when it comes to uh, just, this thing of celebrity. It's a curious thing, celebrity. Could I have a pint with them? Would I like to have a drink with them? Even if they're not necessarily my full flavour of the month, could I sit and have a chin wag with this person and enjoy the moment? And I promise you, Springer was absolutely there. He wasn't just, he wasn't turning it on just for the cameras. This was him. This was kind of who he was. And, you know, when it comes to making your mark on the broadcasting story, of the 20th and the 21st century, there is absolutely no doubt that his name is going to be right up there. Um, sadly missed. And by the way, I should just say that the, the Who Do You Think You Are program that Jerry Springer did, it, it, the, 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 the British one, was probably one of the most powerful because, of course, that had a whole different um, feel to it because he was looking back at his Jewish history and his family and he was talking to those uh, uh, who were around and the story of the Holocaust and the, the, the concentration camps and the like. And uh, he's made other documentaries specifically on that point. But uh, th the guy was absolutely legendary. And so he'd done work over here, bit of talk radio, and he'd done certainly talk sport uh, when he came on with us. Uh, so he, he was kind of a friend of this country too, very much, I think, in that category of the kind of 
the in fact there's a we found an old picture of me and jerry springer together <laughs> i don't know how the heck you managed to find this i probably look about 12 in this image but let's uh, let's have a look at there it is there's me and springer i do look about 12 as well don't i good i'd marry him though good lord um and that was him coming in you can tell it's talk there's a dartboard behind us that, that's how we used to roll back in the old talk sport days uh there it is um, lovely times, lovely memories as well of that man. This is, uh, there is another fact uh, about Jerry Springer, which I had totally forgotten. That's that he was born here. Uh, it was born in Highgate. Uh, so, so somebody, Jay says, you know, Jerry Springer was born in Barking in East London. Well, that's not the information I've got here, but whether it was Barking or whether it was Highgate, uh, he was born in London. Um, and obviously graduate, so he was, he was, he had dual, I think he had dual nationality throughout, and I, di I did know that. Um, in fact, it's even, there, there is even a story, and I don't know if this is true, I don't know whether we can rely on Wikipedia for this, but there is a story that Jerry Springer was actually born on the London Underground in Highgate while the station was used as a shelter from German bombing in World War II and grew up in Shandus Road in East Finchley. That would be exciting. I didn't know that. Uh, but that's just one element of Wikipedia. What we do know, he was born in, in Britain. Uh, let's speak to our own Trisha Goddard, Talk TV presenter and, of course, you know, former presenter of the talk format on ITV. Uh, Trish, how are, how are you doing? Uh, I'm... Just a little bit shocked because I, I uh, knew Jerry, so it's not just another TV um, talk show person. When I, I was signed to NBC, uh, well, um, I, in fact, I sent your producers a photo. I first met him in 1999 yeah. um, at Nat P in New Orleans, and I kind of met him on and off, but then when I was signed to NBC first in 2010 and then fully in 2012, I came over to the States. He was, um, obviously I filmed a lot with him. Um, I knew him, I knew his staff. He thought my PA was so brilliant that we shared the PA for a very long time. Um, and she's gonna actually, I'm gonna, reach out to her because she's going to be uh devastated and he was kind of he was part of the nbc family there was myself uh jerry and maury maury's gonna be really hit yeah. and um then steve wheelcoast later but maury and jerry was so sweet to me in fact i was going to wear a, a dressing gown i i got so many presents from him and we always had a joint Christmas parties and all sorts of get-togethers with staff. Um, I, I know there's going to be a lot of people from my NBC family, Tracy Wilson, my executive uh, producer, or uh, uh, there's, there's, it, it's kind of like a family. You have to understand the NBC family is still very much a family. We're still very much in contact. I mean, I've turned my phone off now, but kind of yeah this this it actually hits pretty hard yeah. he's he was really 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 good to me um we had a right laugh the whole nbc family is kind of very precious um to each other we all looked after each other um and the studio is just around the corner from where i live now here in connecticut so um i know my colleagues Vinny, a whole Paul Fowlhaber, there's a whole crowd of us that just at the moment yeah. are, it's it's kind of not just news to us. I mean, many people would have been more aware than I was about how he, um, how unwell he was, but behind the scenes, he's a really great guy to work with. Yeah. <laughs> really that, I, I was gonna, I was going to say, Trisha, that, that in, in addition to to that, and I, I, I've been saying that I, I met him too, but in a, obviously not a, such a significant capacity. But, you know, the kind of guy I often judge people by, you know, could I go out for a pint with this person? And, I, you know, when I met Jerry Springer, I thought I could, I could go out for a whole weekend with this guy. This man has got anecdotes. This man's got a backstory. This man is entertaining. He's a raconteur. He's funny. He's nice. He's kind. He had all of these things that you kind of that just oozed from him. But in terms of his TV presence, I mean, people use that word X-factor, don't they? But, and, and, and often 
in a misplaced fashion. But given that he had a variety of careers beforehand and all sorts of other strings to his bow, when you put that guy on the TV, something happened. He was just, I mean, I'm, I'm laughing because of things that come back. Um, when I first used to come over to the States, NBC, who's media center around the corner is really great they used to put us up in this hotel on the water and i shared a suite i had the suite for two weeks and then uh, for, and then jerry would have it and we swapped jerry would only ever order the burger only only they always had the burger and i always had seafood linguine and i remember they got the orders mixed up once and i don't eat meat but i i i, I can't even finish half the stories that he he was he was really good company uh, uh he but he was kind he was really down to earth he was kind because i was like the new kid on the block um and we kind of even though we kind of met up over the years he was so kind to me when i came to um when I came to NBC, yeah. 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 And in terms of that genre of television, I mean, what, what you did had, had obvious similarities. Uh, was it, w wasn't quite the same vibe in that sense. It wasn't meant to be, of course. Uh, but there's no doubt about it, and I, I mentioned before, people will talk about the Phil Donahues and the Geraldos and people like that, and, you know, there were others that were, were on the scene and had been on the scene, but there's no doubt about it that Springer really brought this kind of genre of television to an international audience in a big way. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He used to say to me, God, I, you care too much about those people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, he, he did. He, he, he was pretty down to earth about what he did. I mean, it was like a circus. I mean, he did that whole tape, the, the ringleader. But, you know, what you forget, he was really a skilled orator. He was just... Um, you know, he was a he was a mensch. You know, he was really just he had a lot of strings to his bow. Um, he was, as I say, really down to earth. He was really easy to work with. He was really laid back. Nothing kind of phased him. Um, we used to take the mick out of each other all the time. I remember when I first came across him at, in, in New Orleans, I knew what, we all joked we knew wherever he was because you could hear this chant of, Jerry, Jerry, yeah, yeah. Jerry. And he used to have this thing called, he used to give out Jerry beads. Oh, my God, the Jerry beads. I don't know if you've heard that story on his show. He used to do the Jerry beads. And the Jerry beads were, I mean, you've got to remember this is in times gone by things have changed somewhat but jerry beads were given to members of the audience who flashed their boobies and things like that and if you were anywhere near his studio when that was going on it was chaos and we knew when jerry was in the studio because you know you'd have all the the counselors with my guests and what have you and then as we were leaving, you'd get cow naked cowboys to, with just chaps on. You'd get the most bizarre characters walking in, and you knew that Jerry, my show, uh, taping of my show had finished, and the taping of Jerry's show was just about to begin. But yeah, Mor Mori Povich is going to take this hard, and Steve Wilkos, of course, because of course. Steve Wilco started on on Jerry's show, and yeah. Steve and Steve was very very close to Jerry. In fact, they shared uh, a lot of the staff. So I know this is going to hit Steve Wilco's uh, pretty hard as well because that's how he got got his start. But the whole NBC family. Yeah, just, he was uh, the security guy, wasn't he? Of course, he was a security guy. Yeah, and now got got his own show. He yeah. stood in for, for for Jerry a couple of times when Jerry couldn't make it or Jerry was ill and what have yeah, you. Yeah. But he did judge Jerry up until recently. And, um, you know, so, oh, I, I, I'm, I'm still kind of, you know, just taking it on board because, as I say, he wasn't just the Jerry you see on TV to, yeah. to us lot. He's like part of the team, you know. Absolutely. Well, Tricia, thank you. Um, and I know it's always, you know, it's never the easiest time when somebody that you knew well as a colleague and a friend as you did with Jerry Springer uh, and that news is suddenly pounced on you when, uh, when you come on air and uh, at, at, at times like this with very short notice. So thank you, Tricia Goddard. Uh, she is, of course, on the Talk TV team sheet herself and her memories of her friend and colleague, Jerry Springer, who's died age 79. We don't have any further details than that.
uh, other than a statement from his family uh, where they have said that he'd passed away at the age of 79. The comment from his family spokesman, Gene Galvin, was this. Jerry's ability to connect with people was at the heart of his success in everything he tried, whether that was politics, broadcasting, or just joking with people in the street who wanted a photo or a word. He's irreplaceable, and his loss hurts immensely, but memories of his intellect, heart, and humour will live on. Uh, th in that respect, and I, I, again, I... I, I just come back to that point that I made a second ago, that when, when somebody passes away, there is always that sense of no one ever says a bad word. But in so many respects, Jerry Springer was the... And I'm thinking of this from a sort of male perspective. You, 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 uh, and women will have a, maybe a slightly different view on this. But he was the bloke that you thought, I wish I was a bit like that, where you could be confident in any kind of situation. And... Whilst you were intelligent, you weren't a smart ass in that respect. You were bright uh, and funny and just insightful. So he could do all of those things uh, without looking like the kind of person where you'd go, who's that? Who does he think he is? There was no bragging about this bloke. He just That was just kind of him. So if you can walk into a room and entertain all elements of it, and sometimes for different reasons, but all were equally satisfied with the time they got with you. I just think that's a, a, a great that's a great talent to have as a human being. And he's not he's not alone in that completely, but it's still a rarity. There's no doubt about that. Uh, Vanessa Feltz herself, of course, whose own pedigree and backstory is very much in the, the daytime TV public debating genre. I'm sure we'll have lots to say on this as well.